BC Sports and the Olympics, a long-standing partnership. Again at the Winter Games of Calgary, the Olympic tradition continues. ABC Sports presents... Live, in its 27th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today from fabulous Las Vegas, we bring you the $175,000 Showboat Invitational. Let's meet today's finalists in fifth place, a former touring pro looking for his first PBA title, Gip Lentine. In fourth, in his second consecutive television final, the 1986 PBA Player of the Year, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. In third, winner of the 1987 Japan Cup from Venezuela, Amleto Monicelli. In second place, the 1985 Firestone Tournament of Champions winner with four PBA titles from Beaumont, Texas, Mark Williams. A holder of 33 PBA titles, appearing in his 97th championship round, the PBA's all-time money winner, our tournament leader, Mark Roth. That's our field today on the Professional Bowlers Tour. And yes, this scene is nearby. The casino at the showboat. 51 weeks out of the year, but this week, bowling is king. And it's been that way for 29 years with the Professional Bowlers Association. And for us at ABC, 27 consecutive years. And we always have thrilling final bowling games. It'll be no different today because from a field of 312, five have emerged, and among the five, there are a total of 45 professional titles. One in the field of 312 is my colleague. He did well this week because he doesn't bowl that often. Uh, that's why he knows all about the championship pair, and of course, I'm speaking of Nelson Burton Jr., who finished 24th, but in our book, he's number one. Bo? Thank you, Chris. This is a very tough field, as you say, and there's a little bit something different here at the showboat. It's the lane construction. A normal bowling lane is nailed tongue and groove from the foul line all the way down to the pin area. These particular championship lanes are not made that way. They're put together in a factory. They're actually fused together and sealed. There's no cracks or anything to really mess up the roll of the ball. It rolls very smooth on this championship pair. Now, the pros have bowled here many years, as, you, as Chris said, and they know 59 and 60 at the showboat. They know that 59 hooks a little bit more than 60. They know they can always hit 59. The key is this board right here, lane 60. When a player throws the ball wide and hits out in this red or harder board, it's because of its red, it's a harder type grain, and the ball will slide past this board, slide past the head pin, and often leave a very tough spare or a split. Many times we've seen this be the difference in the match. Now, Chris, they're ready to go. 33,000 at stake. Time for action. All right, and two tall, lanky Californians go head-to-head. -head. The winner advances toward the $33,000 first price. The loser, well, he just goes home with a pretty good check of $6,000. So here now is the non-winner, Gip Lentine, 36 years old from Roland Heights, California. That's an area between Whittier and Pomona, for those of you that know the California area. Gip, a former surfer. He's had in and out career and he is on the left lane of the championship pair first shot beautifully done and Bo he mentioned to us earlier his biggest problem would be the shakes the nerves that would set in because he's still looking for that first title well Gip Lentine never has won a game in a championship round he was as you said Chris a former touring player a little bit nervous coming in the championship round. He'll settle down in a few frames, but he's going against a player that's become very dominant in the professional bowlers tour. We saw him in last week's championship round, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Right lane. And we'll get to see how he does with splits. Looking at the 4-6-7 on the right lane. There are quite a few splits this week, Bo. You're right, Chris. As you see, the profile of Walter Ray Williams, Jr. sliding up the foul line. Arm length, shoulder swing, just going for the 4-7. So for a five-time champion, Walter Ray Williams, a dominant force on the tour for the last few years, it's an open frame, nine through the first. So he moves over to the left side now to try his skill on that lane. figured out. Walter Ray Williams against Gip. 
2014. Gipfa led the third and fourth rounds of this grueling championship. Gipfa and team tried to tour Chris, uh, gave up after some success, moved up to Big Bear Lake just outside of Los Angeles, and for two years has worked on his game up there. He feels he's ready to come back on the tour part-time, but he'll never go full-time, he said. Started at age 12 here in California, part of the Youth Bowling Association, which has done a great job for young professionals. Watch Gip one team, five-step delivery, very strong upper body on this man, wrist cupped, good slide. Look at that high extended follow-through, perfect form and a perfect strike in the second frame as he has an early 21-pin lead. He's a six-footer, weighs 170 pounds, very good athlete. hit leaving the 6-10 for Lentine. Gip once again goes high on the left hand lane in the first frame he crossed over and got a lucky strike. Here he got, makes a little bit of adjustment, not quite enough. The ball snaps very sharply in the last 10 feet leaves the 6-10 spare. Gip will attack that across lane from the left side of the approach and try to slide the ball into the 6-10 area and he has had a little bit of trouble with spares this week and I think it's because he just doesn't bowl full time. Uh, two strikes, and that's fair, Lentine, whereas Walter Ray Williams, bowler of the year in 1986, open in the first, strike in the second, now shooting in the third frame of our first game. The winner of this match will meet Amleto Monicelli, exciting player from Venezuela, and then Mark Williams, and then the great Mark Roth. Double-double. <laughs> Since I'm out here bowling for a living, I do it week after week, I don't feel as much pressure because I'm kind of used to it. When I first came on the tour, it bothered me a little bit. And now I play horseshoes at tournaments. I get a little bit choked up sometimes because I don't play them as often as I used to, and the pressure affects me a little bit more in horseshoes. So three in a row, and of course, the answer was to the question, the difference of the pressure between horseshoes and bowling. We'll be back. It's an all-California first game. 36-year-old Gip Lentine, who was leading, now trailing by one pin with a spare up shooting in the fourth frame, going against Walter Ray Williams, who tripled. All right, a beautiful strike. We had a chance to ask him about his bowling shoes prior to the competition. Well, in 1985, I had arthroscopic knee surgery and after the surgery returning to bowling my legs would get very sore I figured it was from the rubber on the urethane approaches and sticking was causing my leg to swell and ache so I tried putting leather on my left heel and it's alleviated the problem sometimes I slide too much but it's allowed me to continue bowling okay with a strike up now in the fifth frame left lane Sliding by, leaving the one, two, four, ten. Mm. All right, Chris, he's left a washout right there, and uh, what he has to do is get the ball over on the left-hand side of the, the pins and take this head pin and knock it over into the ten-pin area. As you see, the ball slide by, leaving the one, two, four, ten. Gip one team needs to convert this to trail by just one pin. So now in the fifth, it's an open frame for Gip Lentine, 94 through five. Williams leading by 15, can increase it to 25. Three in a row, fifth frame. Walter Ray leads by 15. His experience is showing here. Uh, we talked about that difficult area on this right-hand lane, which is the difference in many matches. Walter has moved to an inside line on this lane, down the middle of the lane to try to avoid that spot but not to be on that shot. So now, Walter will try his chances with the one, two, ten. 
Walter Ray, once he slides by and he cuts out all these pins here, he needs to take the head pin and drive it over into the 10 pin to convert the spare. Looked like a conversion, but another open frame coming in the fifth for Walter Ray Williams. And the match is all even. Boy, what a swing. If you could have come up with a strike, it would have been a 25-pin lead. Now the match is even. One of the drawbacks of plastic pins, when you hit them with a bowling ball, they go a little bit higher than the old wood pins of the 1940s, 50s, and early 60s. And that's cost Walter Ray that spare. The match is even. Six frame. Broke up the split, leaving the four, seven on the left lane. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is trying to play in the track area. That's between the second and third arrows. You see that ball roll right through there that, that time and almost leaves the 4 7 10 split. I believe that Walter cannot shoot big games there, but he just has to stay close in the match. Turn the six for Walter Ray Williams. His dad and his brother are here watching him live as our telecast is coming to you from the showboat lanes of the hotel and casino here. A ways from the Strip and a ways from downtown Las Vegas itself. It's nestled beautifully out here, and the uh, low-key folks come here and have a good time. Lentine, six-frame, match is all even. Time to start turning it on. First well, time has happened, Chris. Yes. Here's the first breakdown, 33 of the winner, and what a difference. Second at 17, third nine, fourth seven. Loser of the game you're watching will get 6,000. Incidentally, uh, the men up next, Leto Monicelli and Mark Williams, are warming up to the right. That's the pinfall that you hear from time to time. The 2A10, best Lantine can do is just throw the ball real hard and hope to bounce one of the pins out of the pit area. Ooh. Well, tough break. The uh, third or the second open frame for Lentine. You see the sharp break of Gipps' ball in the last 10 feet of the lane. Takes out the two pin, leaving the eight and 10 pins. He now trails by 12 pins, seventh frame. Historically, we've always had close matches on this championship here, and it looks like today will be no different. Gip swinging that ball like that just to loosen his arm up. That's a real good idea if you feel like you're squeezing the ball too much. Loosen it up. Swing it before you let it go. All but the 10 pen on the left lane. If you just joined us, this is our first match. Lentine off to an early lead, then lost it by a pen all even, and now trails by 12. Chris, uh, the 10 pin was apparently standing, then a pin came across and seemed to knock it over, but the machine came down and assisted the 10 pin to be, to be knocked over, so it must be replaced. You cannot have the machinery, as you see this, the machinery assist in the pinfall. Here the ball comes in, you'll see the 10 pin remaining. Now, the, it looks like it's going to fall over. The machine comes down and touches it, knocks it over. That's not the way to do it. Good, a nice cross lane shot. Looked in trouble for a while, but came back up to cover it. We'll be back with more of the first match. It's Vegas. Tonight from Denver, a Calgary pre-Olympic primetime special. That's right. The United States figure skating champion since featuring America's finest. Competing for national titles, both men and women. Tell you more about that later. Tough one for Walter Ray Williams. Seems like it's uh, bolted down, Bo. You're right, Chris. And here's a shot that many people argue about. Watch the action of the one, three, and see the five pin actually chop the straight back off the eight. Many people think it goes up over the top. As that replay showed, the five pin was taken straight back on the solid eight hit. All right, Walter Ray Williams leading in our first game by 11 pins and leading in Denver going into the long... Uh, freestyle skating program tonight. Debbie Thomas, former world champion and national champion and one of the high hopes for the United States Olympic skating team that will be in Calgary along with all of us starting February 13th. Lentin studying his own game. Trails by 11 pins. Here's Wilbur Williams. Eight frame. 
coming up high and almost crossing over, leaving the 6-10. Walter, Walter, go ahead, Bo. Chris Walter has opted for that inside line, and the players all week long, as you see the ball just cutting right through the middle of the pins, have played an extreme outside line. You'll see that in the last three players coming up. I think Walter struggled in practice. Gip Lentine had been playing outside and also moved in, so they're both struggling a little bit. All right, nine pins now separating these two California professionals. I sort of looked the part as uh, you conjure up a picture in your mind of what Californians look like, the guys especially, right? <laughs> well, Gip... A little and... character in the face there. He's, he's lived a good life. Well, that's for sure. Gip, uh, avid surfer, hardboard surfer, tells me now uses the seven foot eight inch board. Corky Carroll's one of his, who's the world champion surfer, one of his idols. Again, a 10 pin, but this time on the right line for Gip Lentine. Very controlled that shot that time by Gip Lentine. He's over somewhat of the anxiety of coming into a championship round. He made an excellent stroke with that ball, trusted the ball to right, just didn't get the real good break. Left the 10 pin, and once again, we'll move to the left side of the lane, go between the third and fourth arrows, knock this 10 pin in, he will trail. Bowler of the year, Walter Ray Williams Jr. by just 10 pins with two frames remaining. I'm often asked, well, how much can a top professional earn on the bowling tour? Well, in 1986, Walter Ray Williams, 145,550. Last year, 143,000. And here are the 87 money winners. Pete Weber, Ballard, McCordick, Holman, and Williams with 143 was not in the top spot. They can earn some dough now. You're right, Chris. And incentives on the telecast, for instance, last week, Mike Jazz now made $18,000 for first place as you look at the grip of Gip Lentine. A fingertip grip on the middle finger and a semi-fingertip grip on the ring finger. Uh, going back to Jazz now, Jazz now made an additional 19000 in bonuses last week. So $37,000 does not all show on the prize list. Oh, uh, great foundation strike for Gip Lentine. That took off a little of the pressure. Let's, uh, let's see that reaction again. The last two frames, just excellent shots by Gip Lentine. Look at him post that shot. Comes in light, watch those eyes. He knows he's sawing it off. Very aggressive move for the non titleist going against 1987 Player of the Year, a tough competitor, Walter Ray. Thank Frank. All but 10 on the right lane for Walter Ray, who won three of his five titles in 1986. Watch the action of the six pin right over here, Chris, as it lays down in the channel, just slides by the 10 pin. Doesn't have quite enough angle or power. Walter Ray Williams quickly up for the spare. The winner to meet. Amleto Monicelli, a hot bowler, and Mark Williams, Firestone Tournament of Champions winner last year, and then the great Mark Roth. As we go in the 10th frame, the possibilities for Walter Ray Jr., three strikes would be a 200 game, strike spear would be 190, would force Lentine to, to strike to tie the match. We have a good possibility of a tie in our first match. And the 10th end on the left. Once again, the same type of hit from the inside line or down the middle of the lane where Walter Ray Williams is playing. The ball comes through, doesn't bite through. You see it deflect and go over almost by the 10 pin where when the ball is really cutting through the pins properly as you'll see in the next match with a power player coming on, it'll end up behind the eight pin. Walter Ray, three times the world junior horseshoe pitching champion and four times a world adult champion. Walter Ray Williams Jr. with a strike here in the 11th frame would finish with 189. And have to just watch and get Valentin in the 10th. All right, it's a 189 and a uh, Now, Valentin. Pressure, pressure. Before we went on the air, Gip Lentine told me, he says, all I want to do is win one game in the championship round on the professional bowlers tour. 
Well, what stands in front of him right now are just 10 pins that he must knock down on this ball. He's collecting his thoughts. Lentine needs a strike on this ball and nine spare to win. Anything less than a strike, he is defeated. Using the full approach. But the right heel is off of it. Take it. Get Valentina, look at that smile. It's been a long time coming, and of course, not so for Walter Wright. Well, it sets up a situation, Chris, where the match is still in the balance. As you see, as my daddy always called it, unconscious competence. Got a great break, crossing over, tripping the six into the center of the lane. Now he must strike on this ball, or nine spare to win. He needs to make the spare to win. If he misses a spare, we have a tie match at 189. If Gip Lentine makes this spare, he goes on to the second match. And Bo is the last shot. The odds go up a little bit on this particular uh, try at covering the 10. No doubt, Chris, that Gip has had trouble with spares all day long or all week long. In fact, in between the, the eight game matches in the afternoon yesterday and the eight games last night, he went over and practiced spares. So let's see if it pays off. Needs this spare to win the match. There it is. All right. We have a winner in our first match by one pin. 190 to 189. And next up, Amleto Monicelli. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by Kellogg's Corn Flakes. What more could you want from a cereal? Some scores improve in no time. Any questions? About your shoes. They're Lins, right? Right. The Pro Tour leader. Expensive? Not these. Now there's a Lens shoe for you. The Championship Series. Same quality construction, fit, and feel as a Lens Classic, but at a lower price. The championship series. 50 years worth of Lens know-how in a mid-price shoe. Get into Lens. The Pro Tour leader. Lens, available at your local pro shop. Catch World Federation Wrestling late night tonight on 7. In the city of no clocks, there's plenty of action on those one-armed bandits. Boy, they love them. So do the bowling fans. And what a game we had in the first. Kip Lentine, who's trying to win his first PBA title, wins by a pin over a very talented Walter Ray Williams. 191.89, and now in steps, Amleto Monicelli from Venezuela. Should be a great match. Chris, in the... In the Qualifying, Mamletto finished third, and he decided he's the only player of the four players to decide he wanted to finish the match. That means he'll start and then finish on, on lane 59 and finish on lane 60. And he must have an awful lot of confidence because historically lane 60 has been the lane that gives everybody a lot of trouble. But he is bowling fantastic this year. Watch out for Mamletto Morcelli. Up a little high. Now he will try for the 3 6 10, this 26 year older. On the Japan Cup, his only victory. Amleto going high on the first shot. 3-6-10 will go across lane. Hopefully to drive the ball into the 3-6 and take out the 10. His father, Rodolfo, owns the only bowling center in Barquisi Meto, a population of 600,000 people, Chris. You ought to build a center down there, partner. Let's go. Well done. Amleto going to the next bear. Oh, here's the man that showed you how in the very last shot uh, covering a 10 pin on the right lane and that's where Gip Lentine will start now his second game. Walter Ray Williams, the loser, $6,000.
Kip, an excellent ath athlete, as Chris has said earlier, ran track in high school, was the his district pole vault champion with a jump in high school a little over 13 feet, was a leaper, a forward in basketball. Little Hyde leaving the tent. Gip had five strikes in that uh, 190 to 189 win. Gip goes a little bit high here. You see the 410 split standing. The two comes off the sideboard, trips out to four, leaving the 10 pin. And Gip has been pretty good on the 10 pin so far today, converting it every time he's had it. Once again, if he builds his confidence, he'll get going. Look at those eyes. Even after one frame, the winner of this game will meet Mark Williams, the Firestone uh, defending champion from Beaumont, Texas, and then the tournament leader, Mark Roth. Incidentally, finishing sixth in the Showboat Invitational was Marshall Holman. Marshall Holman, we'll have an interview with him uh, before the championship match to see his reaction on being named the Bowler of the Year. PBA Player of the Year for 1987. Gip Lentine, second frame. A four pin. For Gip, what he has to do with that big hook ball is just pick up his speed a little bit. He's got just about the right line, but he picks up his speed a little bit, and the ball is set right there. As you see, the third pin on the left-hand part of your screen is a nice slow replay goes through. The just misses the four pin. Leaves Gip once again an easy spare, but nobody's really attacking. Match play competition. Score is not is only relative to your opponents. Gip wins the first match by one. It's all even in this match. Oh, a lot of star shooting here. And as we mentioned, uh, Gip had five strikes in his victory over Walter Ray Williams. So now shooting in the second frame is Amleto Monticelli. We're going to see a lot of this young man this year, Chris. He is, looks better and better and better every year. Right now at 26 years old, as you see his two shoes, the red and the white one, and uh, somewhat superstitious, but that left shoe has a big hard sole on it to keep him from sliding too much. Another high shot and another 316, 3610. Let's get a profile replay of Amleto. The key with Amleto is to watch how he starts the ball low, straight arm, so he opens that hand up, much like Mark Roth, and just shovels that ball off his wrist. Good low knee bend, so Amleto Monticelli has it all, but he has to put it together here as that uses that fingertip grip, Con trying to convert the same sphere he left in the first frame, 3-6-10. Amleto's first win came in September at the Japan Cup. Prior to that, he had finished second. Get this seven times, including last year, second and four finals, including which was then the Toledo Trust PBA National Championship, also in Atlantic City. And his downfall historically has been his lack of ability to make spares, and he made two difficult ones to start this match. Has one of the great strike balls in professional bowling. But it has to hit the pocket. Here's a 10 pin that he'll have to shoot at. This sellout crowd just seems to be sitting on the end of their feet, uh, seats just waiting for something to happen. And none of the players can seem to get a string going. Mancelli gets the ball solid in the pocket as the people enjoying all the action here at one of the largest bowling centers in the world. 106 lanes, a showboat. And of course, later in the season, we go to the Atlantic City version of the showboat. Brand new establishment. We or there last year and this year, it will be the scene of the United States Open. With a $100,000 first prize. The Mountain Man, Gip Lentine. I always call him that, a good friend of mine. I just, somebody say, telephone call from Big Bear Lake, California. I says, where in the heck's that? He says, up in the mountains outside of L.A. The man who goes to his own drumbeat there, Chris. He could be a double for actor Richard Boone. Take a look at that face. Very true. Well, a 
Another ten pin. The important thing is when team picked up his ball speed. Instead of playing that big soft hook, you could see the ball went straighter down the lane, more under control, and here you go, snaps that right around the six, around the ten. Surely he'd like to have a strike, but having the ball under control, knowing where it's going, is the most important thing. Once again, Lentine with that fingertip grip spreads that index finger for control. Stability on that right hand will kill the shot or break his wrist back as he releases the ball. No wrist action on spares to control the hook. Goes so close to that 10 and the man comes up to cover the 10. Next Saturday, right here on ABC Sports, the Professional Bowlers Tour returns to Torrance, California and the $150,000 AC Delco Classic. Last year, remember? Pete McCordick bowled a perfect game at that site, the Gable House. We're live, except on the West Coast at 3 Eastern and Pacific as we look at Judy Moore, who is the manager of the Showboat Hotel and Casino. That was a wonderful job. Saw her up there at the boxing matches that they have here at the Showboat many times. Now, Gip Lentine leads by two, fourth frame. And a high hit, and that picture is a four, six, seven just struggling and not enough ball speed. All a Gip can do with this ball is just throw the ball over in the 4-7 zone right in here. Hopefully you can bounce one of the pins out and take out the 6. Extra speed, hopefully bounce it out. All right, and it's the first open frame of our second game. Lentine trailing by 12. Don't miss live coverage of the United States Figure Skating Championships. Prime time tonight, 8 Eastern. And Pacific, 7 Central. Debbie Thomas, one of my favorites, the 1986 and 87 World's Ladies Champion. And Brian Boitano, America's Hope in the men's part of Calgary Games. And Venezuela, Monticelli. And Leto Monicelli not giving the ball enough room as you see him come through the shot and it keeps going high, leaving the 3, 6, 9, 10. We saw that converted last week on the championship round. One of the most difficult spares for professional bowlers and amateurs alike. You must get the ball over between the 3 and 6, avoid the chop of the 10, and still carry out the 9. Monicelli needs this to maintain the lead. So it's an open frame, the first in this game for Monticelli, whom we asked earlier his uh, version of why foreign athletes are doing so well here in America. Well, I would say that uh, because uh, they know that uh, American sports is number one here, so they know that the best uh, players are here, they have to try a lot harder coming to another country, so they try a lot harder and they get equal, you know, they get better. The man who speaks Italian, Spanish, and obviously English Trails by four pins, is somewhat lost up in the left-hand lane, fifth frame. Well, just not working the way it was, though, when he was warming up before we went on the air. It was so powerful, so controlled. Very true, Chris. As you see it slide by, leaving the two pin, almost leaves the two ten split. And what has happened? Low humidity in Las Vegas, the oil or conditioner on the lane is carrying down. Remember I said this is not a porous surface, but one thing does happen, the oil carries down. Players can't get the right break on the ball. Well, like in our first game, which was won by a single pin, Giplin team 190 to Walter Ray Williams 189, we have another close match. Four pins separating these two pros in our second game, the winner to meet Mark Williams, then Mark Roth. Giplin team does a lot of practicing, Chris, and one of the things he's developed is he likes to practice a few frames every time he bowls closing his eyes as he goes into his last step and trying to hit a target, say a, um, a mark or a dime out there on the lanes. And it's really a good loosening up uh, method to keep your stroke down and not muscle the ball. And leaving the two, five, and eight. It was interesting, Bo, to hear him say it also maybe helped his balance. Very good. You know, when you have your eyes closed, uh, many of us who are blessed with good sight, don't realize how difficult it is to do a simple thing such as bowl 
without the good vision. And he says, yes, it does give him a much more awareness of what his body is doing when he closes his eyes. Good practice vehicle. All right, he got him. Anxious moment or two at the line for Gipland Keene. And though you mentioned sightless people, it's an amazing number of letters we get from those who do not have sight, but still tune in the professional bowlers tour, and that's why we often repeat the graphics that people with normal eyesight can see. Good point, Chris. As you see, the averages for the 1987 season, much more than 400 games as players. You see that Walter Ray Williams, David Ozu up there, Roth, our tournament leader, Rowdy Morrow, and Tom Milton, who is a former winner of this tournament. Now, no strikes in this match. This is the first time I can ever remember that. Both players threw five frames, no strikes. And still not one as we look at the 2-8-10. All right, Chris, this is the third time we've seen the washout or 1-2-8-10. And the players to convert this need to get the head pin, which is a pin still standing up, and drive it over into the remaining 10 pin, which is knocked down to knock down the spare. The best try was by Walter Ray Williams, Jr., and the head pin went around the 10 pin. And for Lentine, it's his second open frame. I always remember Frank Esposito telling me way back, Bo, if you roll all strikes, you can still shoot 190. And that was the winning score in the first game. <laughs> You're right. Make those spares. Get nine spare, nine spare, and that is a very good point. Neither one of these players are going to make it to 190 the way they're going no. right now. Somebody has to take command. They have to build up their ball speed. Forget trying to crank it and finesse it. Whip it down there. Well, here's another one. Take a look at that. 3, 6, 7, 10. All right. The ball goes right through the middle of the pins. Leaves the 3, 3, 6, 7, and 10. What he needs to do is slide that 3 pin over into the 7 pin zone. Hopefully not chop off the 6 and 10 pins. By the way, the, the lowest scoring match ever on professional bowler score was a total of 296 for the two players, Dennis Jakes and Joe Staten in 1983. Come on. No chance for Monticelli. And that is his second open frame. So the open frames are even now. And the score is nearly that. Monticelli trailing by five. And as we project on the professional bowlers tour, 20 pins per frame. If these players continue at 20 pins a frame, the final score would be 169 to 164. That's about the winning score in Columbus, Ohio last year, I believe, as I remember. That is true. Ball just didn't come up. Well, he tried to throw it harder to control mm -hmm. it, and at least he has something he can make. Yeah. A one, two, four. Uh, a spare that amateurs see quite often. The pros don't very often miss the head pin, but when the lanes get very slick, and as we said, what happens with these real smooth lane surfaces, sometimes the oil or conditioner carries down the lane. What I mean by that is the ball is rolling down the lane. It is picked up on the ball and carried down towards the back end. You can get no hook action. All right. Spare in the seventh frame, and the cheers from the crowd here in a close match. More later. Take the first Eighth frame shot. Running by, leaving the two, and while we were away, we're running way behind our time frame because of all the number of spares. Lentine left to 10, covered it in the seventh frame for a spare. Now he'll try to shoot this one to stay close, keep his lead of four. Match play competition. Actually, the players are starting to have a little fun, even though it doesn't show on their face. This will be 16, let's see, 15 consecutive frames that neither player has thrown a strike. They're definitely setting some records out here right now. But what a lesson in spare shooting that you're getting today by watching the telecast from Las Vegas. Amleto Monicelli will shoot next in the eighth frame with a spare working. Maybe we'll break the string right here. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, $2,000 difference between winner and loser in this match and still a pop at winning 33,000 first. So 
these players are taking it very seriously, yet there has to be a little bit of lightheartedness going through their mind right now. Monicelli trails by four, eight frame. Number one. As Frank Esposito always said, when in trouble, throw the rocket to the pocket. And there he did. He just threw that ball between the second and third arrows and just sawed that five pin off. And maybe he has the solution to these lanes. I've never seen Amleto throw a shot like that, Chris. Mark Roth, the tournament leader, whom you'll see um, two games from now, is watching. And if, speaking of rockets, he can throw them. Let's see if he can make it count. He trails by four pins, ninth frame. So we have the one, two, four, eight on the left lane. How do we shoot it, Bo? Well, the ball just slides off his hand, Chris, and once again, he leaves a fairly difficult spare, the one, two, four, eight. You have to go across or down the center of the lane, drive the ball into the one, two zone. The two pin will take out the eight. Ball deflect over into the four. Despair on that shot by Monticelli as Lentine gets up, shooting the ninth frame of spare working, leading by four. He won the first game, 190, to Walter Ray Williams, 189. When a player, whether it's a league player, professional bowler, is really lost like Gip, he's bowled almost two games on this championship there, hasn't been close, you have to just look at the pocket and throw the ball, what we call rope it in there. He needs two strikes here to somewhat lock up this match because he knows his opponent can't do anything. Forget finessing it, Gift. Just go right at the 1-3 pocket. Finessed it and left the 2-10. And he'll have to convert that to stay ahead in this match. Trying to finesse that ball, there's just no chance. Ball slides by, leaves the 2-10. Needs to get the ball on the left side of the 2-pin and drive it over into the 10 to maintain his lead. Gip Lantine going at a 154 pace. Monicelli, a 164 pace. Earlier I said that the all-time record combined score for two players in a championship round was a 1983-296. So one more open frame, and these fellows would threaten the low game record book. But they're not worried about that right now. They're worrying about how am I going to going to get two strikes or even a spare to win this match. Lantine trails by 10 pins, 10th frame. A 10. Spare and a good count. He will at least force, force Monicelli to mark in the 10th. And as we've seen so far, a mark is no easy task today. Gifts and hope anything. He's going to bowl a whole game without a strike. And he still could win the match. That should happen. Uh, where's the adage? Never give up. Meanwhile, Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas, who will meet the winner, keeps warming up off to our right. Right now, if Lantine with a strike would be 154, Monicelli would be forced to mark in the 10th to go on to meet Mark Williams in the semifinals. The match is still up for grabs. All right, 153, he can still win the match. But there is a great deal of excitement despite the high score, Bo. Fans here now, are, the murmur comes up and they talk to each other to explain to those that don't understand what could happen. So there is excitement. Monticelli needs a mark to win. One of the most interesting matches I've seen in a long time. Match play competition. 
32,000 at stake and a chance at 33,000 on this ball. All but the seven. For Amleto Monicelli, if he converts this spare, he would be in a one, well, over 153, and that's a score needed to win. He needs this spare and one pin to win the match. Unbelievable that a player would have one strike, possibly bowl in the 160s, and advance to the semifinal rounds. It's going to be an interesting day. I think this is really funny. Not funny, I would say, just interesting. They're struggling. Can he make it for a win? All right. Now the task at hand, perhaps, well, without a doubt, the easiest task of this particular game. Needs one pin. It's been a little bit bizarre so far. There's a win. And he gets his second strike, a 163 to 153. Time for our tip of the week, all about the importance of shoes. This tip of the week is brought to you by the makers of Old Spice, Speed Stick Deodorant, and Solid Antiperspirant. If you've ever experienced problems of sticking at the line or slipping across the foul line, you know how frustrating it can be to have improper footwear. Many people make the mistake of not buying proper bowling shoes when they are buying bowling equipment. Now let's take a look at the bowling shoes. First, the house shoes are rental shoes. They're not too bad except there's one major drawback. They're made for both lefties and righties, and they have slide soles on both shoes. This doesn't allow you to effectively get a good lift on the bowling ball. What I recommend is a pair of custom shoes. For you left-handers, just transpose what I'm about to say. First, let's take a look at the right shoe, or the traction shoe. This shoe gives you stability all the way to the foul line, especially on that second to last step, or that pivot step, where you have to push off the tip of this right sole to get the power on the bowling ball. Second, the sliding sole. As you notice, there's a smooth, perforated sliding sole on this left foot. It gives you a smooth transition all the way to the foul line every time. So remember, if your problem is with the approach, invest in a good pair of bowling shoes. Now let Bo help you score even more. You'll also fix problems, improve strategy, and practice smarter with Bo Burton's new bowling video. This video is for you. ABC Sports and Old Spice bring you Bo Burton's new instructional video, Score More. Just $24.98 plus $3 shipping. Call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. That's 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. I know two professional bowlers that feel you can have more luck out there. A few steps away, the casino here at the showboat. Because we have just had a game with only two strikes in it. The winner, Amleta Monicelli, with two strikes, shot a 163 to Giplantine's 153. Gip had won the first match, 190 to 189. There's the size of the field bow, gigantic. Big field, 312. You can see the game average kind of low, 205, top 24, 208. That's not very much either. So here's some of the other top players, Holman, Kreitz, Wayne Webb, Thompson, Rick Steelsmith, third time in a row. Berardi's always there. David Houston, former U.S. Open champion. Sam Macaron, the powerful Jimmy Keith. Westlake, the first 300 of the year. Ray Perez, Dickinson. Ernie Schlegel, the president's in there. Shortcut, Sam Zurich, Mats Carlson, Andre Neuer. Palmer Fogger, our statistician, John Gant, and he can bury that last one, Chris. <laughs> Who is that in Burton, Jr.? <laughs> well, he made 1300 bucks. We know where that we can get a touch now. Well, it's been a good start after an eight-quarter playoff. Proud of you. Here we go. Semifinal match. A lot of money at stake. 17000 for second, a crack at 33000 for first. Let's see what Monicelli can do. He struggled through with a 163 win. <laughs> a new ball game for Monticelli. <laughs> he ripped it. What a beautiful finish on the ball into that pocket. As now we get a, a first look today, Mark Williams, who has four titles in his eight-year career, needs a win today for many reasons. He is 30 years old from Beaumont, Texas. Oh, yeah. Looking into the pocket. 
Here's a man with a powerful bowling ball, as you see it just charging right through the pins. The first player to come out and act like he knows what he's doing. Profile of Mark Baker. He is really a self-taught bowler. He struggled out here for years, and now he's starting to come into his own and take the early lead with a double. And the back-to-back -back winner last year, including the Firestone Tournament of Champions, had a little tough luck here in the second frame, first shot. One, two, seven. Here's an interesting spare. You, the best percentage is to shoot it on the right side towards the pocket, drive the one into the two, the two into the seven. Now, many players will try to cross over, and if they don't get over there, they got a lot of trouble leaving the seventh. And let's see what he does. Oh! Dropping the two and seven off the one, and after a strike, an open frame for Mark Williams. The big hook of Mark Williams, a little bit uncontrollable. Hooks right by the head pin. Leaves him in arrears by 12 pins just after two frames. Now, Amleto Monicelli trying to equal his strike total of his first match. And a ten leader after two frames. Amleto Monicelli make it 22. Here's how Amleto Monicelli got through the tournament. In 56 games, the first, second, third, and fourth were qualifying rounds. He qualified 13th. Then the fifth, the match play round, he moved up to sixth up to third in the next eight game match play and in the final match play round he moved up to third here at the showboat he was sixth in 1985 61st in 86 70th in 1984 third place finisher this year but moving ahead oh it's a 10 pin on the left lane Amleto Monicelli going for three strikes in a row, solid 10. As you see, the six pin fly right over the top of the 10. Monicelli quickly up with a much lower surface friction ball. He's using a polyurethane ball for his strike shots. This is a polyester bowling ball, a little bit more of what we call the plastic version for the spares. It doesn't hook as much. Okay. Monicelli can rest for the 30 year old Mark Williams, 6'1, 190 pounds, opening with a strike. Then had an open frame in the second here, shooting in the third on the right lane. Okay, we asked uh, Mark earlier how important this tournament is to him. Showboat Invitational this year is very important for me because as of uh, last year, as of the year before, I had a very bad summer and then bowled fairly well in the fall to uh, make some of the money back, but uh, I've fell, fallen off in the winter. This year I'm starting off rather well, my first tournament of the year, I've qualified second, and I'm looking to win to uh, keep a good streak going. And cut the lead down to 11 pins. Get some all but the 10. Well, this is just like uh, any other sport, Chris. If you don't play the proper shot, whether it be golf or tennis, you don't get the results. Mark Williams trying to play that big hook ball is just all over the lane. He's missing left, he's missing right, and he trails by 21 pins here after four frames. All right. We're in our third game of the afternoon. More after this. The side of Pete McCourty's perfect game for the $150,000 AC Delco Classic next Saturday on ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour. They were away, this man, and Leto Monicelli, a strike in the fourth, the fifth leaving the bucket here. And marking with a spare and continuing to hold a lead over his opponent, Mark Williams. See what Williams does. Does he take a cue from Amleto Monicelli? Both these players are normally big, powerful hookball players. Williams has watched Monicelli go to the hard, straight one. Let's see if Williams does it, too, to get back in this match. Here he is. The stylist is left with a 7-10. It's only three of those were made this week. Mark Roth, our tournament leader, Joe Berardi, and an amateur whose name we couldn't come up with. And how they made it, Chris, is they take the ball, throw it very hard into the 10 pin, hopefully bounce it out into the 7. That's the way to make the 7-10 split. Oh, you see it bounce around there. Sometimes you get a break and it comes out. Oh, you need better luck than that at the tables around here. <laughs> mm. Well, back to the wall. Well, 
Mark Williams, trailing by 34, has found that his big hook ball is just not working. Maybe he ought to pick up that spare ball that he normally uses. That'll go a lot straighter and throw it right towards the pocket like Monticelli's doing. Gets by with a hook there. Strike in the sixth frame. Monticelli is now shooting in the sixth with a spare working. If you just join us, uh, he won over Gip Lentine, 163 to 153. Lentine defeating Walter Ray Williams in her first game, 190 to 189. for the man who this fall at the Bud Budweiser Classic in Columbus lost to Leroy Bornhop in the title match 169 to 160. <laughs> Still, who wins? It's not by how many. And uh, Monticelli right now has found the proper way to, to play the lanes. Uh, he's going hard and straight between the second and third arrows, not giving up what we say, the pocket. He never throws the ball wide enough to really miss the head pin. So he can take a commanding 44-pin lead if he can double here in the seventh. Leaving a four-pin. Smart bowling, though. Keeping it in play. Nobody can get a string. Everybody's proven that so far. Don't defeat yourself. It doesn't make any difference if you bowl 250 or 150. The big difference is whether you win or lose that game. Monticelli keeping the ball in play right now, figuring that 200 will win the match, and I believe it will. Should that be the case, he would go on to meet the great Mark Roth. We'll be back. Elite skaters buy for a national title plus a spot on the U.S. Olympic team. The U.S. Figure Skating Championship at ABC Sports Special tonight. Eight frame shot and a strike by Mark Williams as we're running way over our allotted time. While we were away in the seventh frame, Williams left a one three six nine covered it for his spare. He's going against Amleto Monicelli, the 26-year-old from Venezuela, who has a 34-pin lead, can increase it as he shoots in the ninth with a strike up. All right, leading by 44 pins. Good lesson to be, be learned right here from Amleto Monicelli as he keeps the ball in play, goes straight down and in, uses a lot of speed. Good match play strategy. And I would say three years ago, he'd have blown it right here, Chris. But as he comes up here in the ninth, he can extend his lead to 44 pins. Left lane. a two pin next week in Torrance California Gable House the $150,000 AC Delco Classic to be followed we move to Grand Prairie Texas the Quaker State Open Don Carter's Kendall Lanes in New Orleans and over to Venice Florida for the Forward Journal Open as we see Mark Williams come up here in the eighth frame he has a chance to get back in this match. Monticelli going in at a 209 pace. Williams, if he could strike four more times, would finish with 205. But it's now or never. He must strike to stay in the match. Winner to meet Mark Roth for the $33,000 first prize. It's history, Chris. This match is over. Monticelli just has to stay in the building. The best Mark Williams can do is 185. Monticelli... Uh, Obviously has it locked up. He knows it, but trying to keep his control here. Then it'll be 9,000 for the Beaumont, Texas club. Interesting, in the next game, the winner will get 33,000. The runner-up or loser will get 17,000. Do you have any questions on bowling? Send a card or letter to Ask Bo, Post Office Box 217, Ansonia Station, New York, New York, 001023. 
All right, Mark Williams is out of the match, Chris. It's all over. The best he can have is 175. Monticelli already has the match locked up. As we come to the final match, we're going to see the great Mark Roth against Amleto Monticelli. Great match coming up. That's next. And Leto Monticelli winning his match over Mark Williams by 44 pins, 218 to 174. So now he goes against 33-time champion Mark Roth. As we go to Bo Burton. And with me, Marshall Holman. Marshall, the new Bo of the year. It has to be something you're proud of. Thanks, Bo. It really is a uh, great thrill. And, uh, you know, 14 years on the tour, it finally came my way. Was it kind of surprising to you that you won Bo of the year without winning a PBA title? Uh, some people say it's a little controversial. What's your feeling about it? Marshall Holman's always been controversial, and it, it was kind of a surprise, but, uh, hey, I had a good year, I had a good record, and uh, I'll stand by it. Well, as you told me earlier, it's uh, not bore of the week, it's bore of the year, and you felt, and I did too, that uh, you out-averaged everybody for the year, you were consistent, only missed cashing in three tournaments. Congratulations. Continued success in 1988, partner. Nelson, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right, Chris, championship match. Another great one up there. Mark Roth, they're ready to go. Mark Roth. 33 titles, Bowler of the Year four times, continuing to practice. And here in this, the Showboat Invitational, he led the last three rounds. He came from 47th in the first round to third, then to second, and then, of course, first. Leto Monticelli, who is 10 years younger than Roth at 26. Seven strikes in the last. He had six of them on the right lane. He's on the left now. And another one on the left lane. All right. And Leto Monticelli with that tremendous snap in the ball that Mark Roth, even though he's still the greatest, used to have. He's lost a little bit of that snap, Chris, but he still can beat us all out here. He's like a great baseball pitcher. When he lost a little bit of the power, he's learned to cut down the hook a little bit, keep it in play. All-time leading money winner in the sport of bowling. Yeah. And over. Mark Roth opening with a strike to keep the match even. Profile view. The familiar profile of Mark Roth. Who, how many steps do I take? Mark says, well, I don't care. I'll just start walking. That high back swing, good wrist action, and off to a real good start with a kind of a lucky break. Though crossing over has a strike. The match is all even. Championship match. Now on the left lane. Going for his third singles victory here at the showboat. Has a doubles win as well. Left the 10 pin. And the man who, when he won first here in 77, had to defeat Earl Anthony and Dick Weber. Mark Roth, as you see his ball coming down, going into the pins, just doesn't get the amount of hook that he was getting all week long. No power at the back end and not enough to knock out the 10. The man who doesn't miss any spares, Mark Roth. Best spare shooter on the tour. Mark Roth, who won six titles in 1978. Monicelli with one title, winning in September at the Japan Cup. Something you predicted last year, Chris. You said that they cannot stop him from winning. Uh, he just didn't want to do it in the United States. He said, I'm from Venezuela. Leave these Americans alone for a while. I'll win in Japan. Here he is to take the lead. Thought he had a double, but left the 10. Woo! Mm. The crack of the ball as the six goes flying right around the 10 pin. Watch this six pin. He'll just go right around the 10. Could have been an early lead, but once again, Monicelli with this conversion would have an even match with bowling's all-time greatest, Mark Roth. All even after two frames, championship matches, they bowl for $51,000. 50000 make it. 33000 for winner, 17000 for second. Monicelli, whose dad, Rodolfo, owns a not only a bowling center, but a clothing factory making some of the finest formal wear in the world. Monicelli clothes. Third frame, left lane. A 
two pin. Ball just slips off his hand. When a player turns the ball as much as Amleto Monicelli normally does, he's used to that ball staying on his thumb a little bit longer. When he straightens it out or somewhat what we call fudges it, the ball comes off your thumb a little bit quicker, and he dropped that ball. Fortunately, playing the right shot, he got an easy spare. So now up Mark Roth. See what Roth does on the right-hand lane. Tried to go straight at the pocket like Monicelli. He was observing from the side, crossed over and got a good break in the first frame, but he knows that can't continue. He has to make some sort of adjustment. Just wouldn't come up, and he too now will try to cover the two pin. And that's what makes the lane so tough. You saw Roth go up towards the pocket, and he crosses over. Now he moves over about two boards, which normally would accommodate the the extreme amount of hook he had in the first frame, and the ball slides by. Just no margin of error and no readability to the lane. I mean, what I mean by readability, a player has to be able to make adjustments that make sense in order to score. Mark Roth, whom we earlier asked, what is his next challenge? I have three challenges right now. One of them would be to try and catch Earl in titles. It's a long way away, but uh, you never know what could happen. And, five, six years. And the other two would be to win the Firestone Tournament Champions and the Brunswick World Open. I bowl well in those tournaments for the years, and I'd like to win them both. Wonderful young man in Spring Lakes Heights, New Jersey, with his wife Jackie and daughter Stephanie, who's quite a figure skater. They'll be watching primetime special tonight, the United States Figure Skating Championships right here on ABC. 8 o'clock. Mark Roth, all this in Las Vegas. We're in our final game, the championship match. More after this. Turn to the side of Pete McCordy's perfect game for the $150,000 AC Delco Classic next Saturday on ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour. From Akron, home of the Firestone, the commissioner of the PBA, Joe Antonora. From Venezuela, Amleto Monicelli. All even match, fourth frame. He's just straight on that right lane. The eighth strike on it, and now his second game. The key to the championship here is you see Monicelli just drive all ten pins into the pit. Remember this, go straight on lane 60 as Monicelli's doing, and you can get away with hooking the ball on lane 59. Mark Williams had good success on 59. Mark Ross had good success on 59, hooking the ball. Monicelli has been close on 59, but very solid on lane 60. Now, to take the lead, he needs this double, all even after four frames. The late call on the two pin for Monticelli. That double puts him off to a 10-pin lead. Watch the two. One of the great breaks in the sport of bowling. The head pin goes to the sideboard, wraps all the way around, hits the eight from behind. The eight falls in the two. Monicelli has taken the lead by 10, but Roth can even it up here with a strike in the fifth. Never in doubt. What a player. This 36-year-old, originally from Brooklyn, Four-time bowler of the year. Look at that shot. One of the greatest records that I think will be a long time before it's broken. Mark Roth averaged 221 in 1981 for a whole season. 221 per game. 36-some cities. Thousands of games. Now he can take the lead. The match is even five frames. And a two pin on the left lane for Mark. Look at this. The record of uh, this 36-year-old. First title to King Louis, where he shot a 299 game in garnering that title. Championship round appearances, 97. Titles, 33. Earl Anthony has 41. And there's some of the other accolades of Mark Roth. But he hasn't won the Firestone.
Now Amleto Monicelli. Key frame. The lane he can hit, he leads by one, but he has that strike working. He needs to put a little nail in the coffin of Mark Roth if he's going to defeat him. Cannot let Roth get close to you in the 10th. He is the toughest. He's just killing that right lane. Nice strike on it. Gee. What a terrific lesson is being taught to all of us by Monicelli. His discipline on the tour, one of the really good trainers on the tour, but his ex experience. We've seen in the recent years the more conventional type player coming to the forefront in the Pro Bowlers Tour. Walter Ray Williams Jr., the player of the year 1986, throws a fairly straight ball. Now Monicelli shows you his diversity by throwing the big hook when he needs it and straightening it out to stay in the match here. He leads by 11, can extend his lead over Mark Roth to 21 with one more strike. He won $112,000 last year. In disbelief, he watches the 10. Bang! You saw Monicelli come up there in the second frame and not leave a 10 pin as he just air mails all nine pins straight back, six pins gone. But he has to take his time, only a 10 pin lead if he converts this spare. Shot covering the pin. Monicelli leading Mark Roth by 10. The hand of Mark Roth. Many years of beating. That's all patch around the thumb. What that is is gauze and cotton or clodium, very much like the type they use in the hospital. Mark Roth burying his thumb completely in the ball. That tremendous snapping action. Very tough on his hand. Well, as far as the match goes, it's pretty much even. Roth has left two 10 pins. Monticelli's left two 10 pins. The off hits have been two pins, easy, easy to convert spares, and yet Roth will trail by 11 pins after he makes this 10 pin. Okay. One of the New York Rangers' biggest fans, Mark Roth. Mark Roth just taking his time. Most matches that Roth has won, or not most, but many, are out of fear. He never really lets defeats himself, and I'm sure that Monicelli's thinking of that now. The pressure on Monicelli is not only to win the title, but to beat Bowling's all-time leading money winner. Eighth frame. Just didn't come up, and then Mark has a 2-10 on the left lane. Mark lets it sail by, and in order to convert this split, he needs to get the ball to the left side of the two pin and slide it over into the 10 pin. It's a break knocking out the eight pins, almost unmakeable with the eight pin in there, but now he can take the two pin, slide it over into the 10, and stay close in the match. Not to be. Nope. Now Monicelli up in the eighth frame with the spare working, leading by 24. Just join us. He defeated Williams, 218 to 174. Eliminated Gip Lentine, 163 to 153. Lentine winning the first match, 190 to 189 over Walter Ray Williams. The 10 on the right lane. And Leno Monicelli just bowling a terrifically cerebral match play so far today. He went with a big hook early in the match, snuck by Gip Lentine, then took advantage of his experience, bowled a nice steady game against Mark Williams, and now with just two frames to go with a spare here, he would have a 23-pin lead over Mark Roth. Forget tonight at eight o'clock prime time the United States Figure Skating Championships ladies and men's competition. Debbie Thomas, Brian Boitano, 
Debbie leading uh, with the final ladies freestyle skating long program tonight. It's live. Monticelli coming up ninth frame, 23 pin lead over Roth. Could close him out with two marks. God couldn't believe the 10 on that shot. If indeed uh, Amleto Monicelli really develops this down and in style like this, Chris, combined with his power, he would probably be as dominant a player as have a chance to be as dominant a player as we have on the tour. Uh, you still got to beat the Holmans, you still got to beat the Walter Ray Williams Juniors, the Ross, but it would put Amleto Monicelli right up in their class. Okay, and he's only 26 years old. But he is fit, jogs. Grew up playing soccer and bowling, of course. Statistician Palmer Falgren says Roth will start throwing strikes here. I think he's really got a tough task in front of him because the lane condition is just so tough. That is a four pin. $13,000 difference. Roth just a little bit high in his effort to set up the key ninth frame strike. Thinks it's going to settle there, settle there. Oop, little body English not to be. Can make this spear and finish with a 2.04 game. He still has a chance to win. Okay. It's good I don't keep the books over here at the hotel because there's a $16,000 difference between winning and finishing second. <laughs> I said 13. Uh... Well, Chris, Mark Roth led at 56 games, mm -hmm. has a tremendous record here, must strike on this ball. Monicelli will be the 1988 Showboat individual champion if Roth does not strike on this ball. Mark won here in 77, again in 81, second in 80, fourth in 79. And we're looking now at the one, two, four, seven, and the 26-year-old from Venezuela. Look at how wide he sends this ball. It just comes off his hands. You can see how slick the lanes are. This is life in the fast lane on the Pro Bowlers Tour. The best Mark Roth Chris can shoot is 190. Monicelli just stay around, collect his $33,000 and move on to Torrance, California for the AC Delco Classic next week. Mark, who led the last three rounds of this event. And leaving a four pin after shooting a 189. Monticelli needs two pins for 33,000. That's winner right there. Gets all ten. And let him on his day. Winning in Japan and now in Las Vegas. We'll be back. The Professional Bowlers Tour is being brought to you by True Value Hardware Stores. It's more than our name. It's our way of doing business. And by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Here we are again, Champion Ford, side by side. USAC tested them for performance. Standard half tons with the best automatics and half ton payloads. Result: the full size Chevy Beat Ford. Beat them in acceleration, highway passing, pylon course handling, level and uphill trailer towing acceleration. So how does Ford stand up to the Chevy with a Vortec V6? Still not very well. Now get $500 cash back on new full-size CK pickups. That's the day's Chevy truck. You may not have thought of buying a Sears Die Hard battery until you've had a little time alone to think about it. Judy Moore presenting a $13,000 check to the winner, Monticelli, 215, Mark Ross, 189. ABC Sports Tonight, United States Figure Skating Championships, featuring the ladies and men's competition. Next Saturday, 
will be in Torrance, California for the finals of the $150,000 AC Delco Classic. Up next, ABC's World News Saturday. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the...